In this chapter, we're going to start to dig into the exciting world of three-dimensional art. Now, even though we can't really create three-dimensional objects like a 3D program would in After Effects, we can move things around in 3D space. In this movie, we're going to look at how to convert a 2D layer and make it 3D. So I have here this rock logo. If I click the uh, eye icon, we can see just the rock part of this. This art we're looking at is a logo that I created using some files from Illustrator. We'll be using this art again in Chapter 19 for a project there. So what I want to do is hit P for position and shift S for scale and shift R for rotation. And I want to show you these properties because each of these will change once the layer is converted to 3D. Anchor point will also change, but I don't fiddle with anchor point as much as the other. So we're just going to be looking at position, scale, and rotation here. Now the way to convert a 2D layer into a 3D layer is by coming over here underneath this cube with the switches area of the timeline panel showing and just click that. And when we do, you'll see that nothing happens in the composition panel, nothing visual happens. But beneath the surface, behind the scenes in the timeline panel, much has happened to our layer. For example, position and scale now have three properties instead of two. That's because we've added that third dimension. X is the first dimension, left and right. Y is up and down, that's the second dimension. The third dimension is Z position, that is towards you or away from you. I'm just going to undo those changes using Command Z or Control Z on the PC. The biggest change, however, probably happened to rotation. Rotation went from being one property to becoming four properties. Now at first glance, when you start moving around, let's say, Y orientation, it looks very similar to Y rotation. But be careful here, folks. You only want to animate rotation. You do not want to animate orientation. You use orientation to basically establish where an object resides in 3D space. Where is it positioned? How is it angled? In which direction is it pointing? Etc. I'm going to right click on orientation and select reset. Right click on Y rotation and click reset as well. There are also some material options added to the layer when it turns into a 3D layer. We'll look a little more at these options when we create shadows a little later on in the chapter. Once the layer becomes 3D, you'll also notice these three little arrows here. To see these better, I'm going to add a little bit of Y rotation. There we go. Maybe a little bit of X rotation as well. And these arrows are basically just to make sure that you can constrain movement along a given axis. So if we want to move this along the X axis, then we can do that. If we want to move it along the Y axis, we could use the green arrow and the blue arrow controls the Z axis. I really recommend using these arrows, especially at first when you're getting used to working with 3D and After Effects. That's because it's really easy when you're fiddling with the properties here in the timeline to accidentally make some kind of mistake and have your layer just go off the screen or completely askew or weird or whatever. But when you use these arrows, there's just more control over what you're doing. So now we know how to make objects three-dimensional. And we can see that when we move objects or rotate them to the side, they're just flat layers. They're not three dimensions to the layer. We could just move it in 3D space. But in the next movie, we're going to show you how to make this work for you. Basically, the way that After Effects 3D looks cool is that you have a bunch of layers that are staggered in Z space in three dimensions. And then you animate those, and the effect is really cool. So that's what we're going to look at in the next movie.